buns and mimosas Yeah, it's gotta be bubbly kind of time Join new friends to relax and unwind The best food with drinks on the side Cheers to the good times It's friends and mimosas Oh, I'm I I would need to think very long. Yeah, I have to think very long about it. I think our season was interrupted by the pandemic, and so that in and of itself is a really challenging. So we were literally, you know, we were. Basically locked away with someone who we had met three three weeks before. Two weeks before. What is the normal show like? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah. Sixteen. Oh. Yeah. And and we didn't have regular lives yeah. yeah. outside of. Yeah. So you couldn't go to work. Couldn't go to work. Couldn't work. Couldn't work. Yeah. So you are stuck. Stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was the show. Was uh, she too hard with the show? Yeah. You can probably describe it as a second. Uh, yeah, I mean, the premise of the show, they have a um, panel of three experts um, who are um, kind of like uh, relationship counselors, people, you know, in certain cases, uh, sex therapists, things of that nature. Um, and they receive a number of applications from people. If they move from city to city with each season, and it's um, all heterosexual relationships. So it's, um, you know, you have a pool of men and a pool of women who are separately applied saying, I would like, I'm, I'm sick of like trying to find my person. You take it away and find the person who's right for me. So then they look over these applications, which are written, which are interviews as well. And then they determine like, oh, we think this you know, we could, you know, in my case, Bennett and Amelia would make a great match for each other. So they are going to get married, and they're only going to meet at the altar. So then, over the course of the eight weeks after they meet, the two people, uh, you know, the the newlyweds, it kind of tracks the progress of their relationship and it turns, uh, and and it culminates on decision day. Um, when they decide whether to stay married or get okay, divorced. So, 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 Thank you. Would Thank you. you do that? Yeah. 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 I think at some point while we were at the altar, I was standing there for like 90 minutes before she came down. And so I saw her family, I saw her friends, but I never seen, I don't know what she looks like. We get there, I get her name, and then like five minutes later we're married. And we have to decide, like, you know, kiss the bride. And I'm like, can I? Can I? Can I? Right? Um, right? Like you asked, can I kiss you? Yeah. I mean, did you ask or you went for it? I don't understand. Uh, we, we, we didn't really smooch. I'm not sure how that navigated, how we navigated that. If there was like a request for permission, we were in an exceptional circumstance as far as she and I had met. I know, yeah. So that must have. Okay, so on the show, it says. 
She's whispering to a friend, I think, I've met her before. Yeah. Oh. So it was just, you know, it was... What did you think at that, that moment? Like, oh, I never thought about it that weekend. No, I mean, when I met her, I'd be, you know. I mean, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. I happened to be with somebody else, and I, she had happened to be with somebody else, too. Okay. I don't think I, I didn't know that at the time. But, like, you know, just, okay. but I noticed her, I thought she was really cute, funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, audition. Um, Until you get to that 25 people, are you interviewed yeah. by the experts or something like this? So I was like, other producers. And then after the 25, 25 extra, we were interviewed by the experts through the audition process. Did we? Yeah, there was. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. yeah there were both. There were, we started with like quick kind of speed dating off camera ones, and then we did a few on the camera. Do you believe that they are choosing? I do believe they're trying their best to choose. I do. I do. And the chances of them getting it right with each one are so slim. Right? I mean, I, these people have never met. It's not like, you know, it, this is very different from a traditional arrangement. I mean, so far as like, your parents like know you very well and can kind of like figure out whether it's a cultural, spiritual mix, right? These are people who are used to no more than an hour with who are like basing their, you know, assessments on written and, and spoken responses. But you could, you know, who's to say that anyone who's showing up is like representing themselves well, you know? So, yeah, of course. And he's, I mean, I, no, but yes. I mean, in terms of like work, in any context, like sitting here with you, I'm putting on some kind of work. <laughs> you know, but that's like that's the truth. You know, we we are all chameleons in our own way. You talked about mental health on the so. Did you want to just bring awareness of it? Um, did it help you in some ways? Yeah, um, so I think when we talk about this on the, on the, on the broadcast as well, it's like when you have to decide like, what you want to be able to share and what you want to share, like for me, I think talking about mental health and mental, mental wellness is really important. It's not really important to me. I don't to get normalized and stigmatized like people talking about mental health. For me, I was torn between whether or not I wanted to share it because I know that there's a lot of negative things. There's a lot of the lack of awareness or ignorance, right? And so when producers asked me if I wanted to share about it, I was like, at the time, I wasn't ready, I didn't feel ready to, but I knew that I wanted to at some point. And on the show, we were on our honeymoon, it was like a week after we met. And I told her, hey, I'm someone who struggles with depression, this is what it looks like for me, etc. She responded in positive and like, asked all the right questions that I was like, think of, made me feel very comfortable. And then when they showed on TV, they made it seem like it was a red flag for her, which was not the case. And that really hurt me and hurt us in a way because I was in a very vulnerable moment. I was in a very an opportunity for us to be able to show how you can take care of somebody when they're, when they're expressing that to you. And it was used in a very like, negative negative light. However, for me, I believe that I talked about mental health, I talked about um, like oppression in different ways, but with family race, and I thought that was really important for me to share about myself. And since the show, that's been a really big part of my platform and bringing awareness and a lot of really cool things that happen with the world of it. Um, and so I think it's been a pro for me in terms of being able to share about it. my story and help other people share their stories. We have to help folks around the world, around the country, um, talk about, like, be, be okay with not being okay. You know? um, but also the part of the work that I do. So that's a pro that you have to show in the corner that you share. Is there anything that you wish you would have shared? I wish you could have took back. That was on the show. 
So the body we have. Honestly, I don't even know what all is up there. Right? You know, I really don't know what's up there. And so, I mean, there's, there's nothing that I've, I've shared that I'm not talking to people knowing about me. Uh, I think it's interesting what people remember. Right? Uh, I think one day, one day I was out eating something and they were like, hey, uh, how many shoes do you have now? And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, you have a, you have a bunch of shoes. And I was like, well, I do. When did I tell you that I had a shoe? Right? Like that type of stuff is going to be odd, you know? But I think I'm, I'm pretty, I'm comfortable with what, I'm very positive about what I share. Yes. I feel similarly to Miles. I'm pretty comfortable with everything I talk about. There are a few things that like, similarly kind of became hallmarks of my Persona that people will, you know, you still sleep in a dress? Oh, yeah. 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 I do, yeah. It was cute. Yeah. It's very comfortable. Any show. Life is a broadcast, lesson one, take two. One. Take one. One. Lesson one, understanding, understanding your, your intentions. intentions. What is reality and um, what? Series? Uh, ten yeah, it's, it's ten um, lessons. The last lesson is specifically devoted to coping with the noise. Which is to say, like, kind of everything we're talking about as far as, like, how people react to, you know, how to deal with this influx of attention you suddenly have to go down with. And that episode, because there's so much contained there, like, what it's like watching yourself on TV, what it's like, you know, dealing with social media, all these, that one's broken up into three separate sub -lists. I think since we were both on kind of a, a more love-centric show, right? I think it's it's most geared towards the experience of being on that kind of uh, unscripted show. But I mean, I think a lot of the lessons also are very applicable to appearing on any kind of reality show. Would you would you advise someone? Uh, what I have, so I have spoken to people who have been cast on shows like it, and my advice is never, it's, it's, it's I don't go into it with this expectation that, like, anyone should or shouldn't do the show. We, I have started, you know, and kind of, we think this explain this through um, Life in the Broadcast, I ask, what are your intentions? What do you want out of this? Why are you doing this? Right? Um, what are your expectations? And I think the key for anyone who's thinking about doing this kind of thing is determining honestly and clearly whether or not their intentions and desires line up with what this experience will actually deliver. And sometimes the, the other thing we need to be accounted for is like fear, right? Like I've spoken to people who said, you know, I'm a DJ and I really, I think this will really catapult my DJ career. And I'm like, no, listen, I'm, that's really, I'm really great. I can't wait to see you perform as a DJ myself. But that is not, having less in the way is understanding myself as a theater artist, musician. People were not interested in my theater or my music. They're interested in knowing um, who I am sleeping next to every night. <laughs> The intentions, which we've already talked about, just kind of, you know, before you sign up for this process, realizing, trying to be fully transparent with yourself. Why am I doing this? What is, am I looking for love? And am, am I trying to be an influencer? Am I um, just looking for some wild adventure? Um, because only once you understand your intentions can you actually know whether you're going to get what you want out of it. Um, and Miles, to your point earlier about 
what they're fun. Like yeah. looking back on it, I think, I think when I got to thinking about thinking that I was doing this show, I was like, how many people are gonna be able to say they ever did it? Right? Like you look back on it, and I'm like, like there are things that I would take back or do differently, but like. My life is my life is all that's always gonna be a great story to get to. Right? My right, my students, my students and their family, they know me from you know know, know that I'm on TV. And so it's so funny to talk about that. Like, very, very like, Why are you married on TV? Yeah, I was right. But you're also my principal, like like they think the the T V is just T V, right? And so like being able to, to, to be a balanced person is all the person. yeah, continue. Um the second one is uh, understanding your archetype and boundaries, right? So knowing that reality TV is always going to kind of pigeonhole you, right? You're kind of going to be a specific, you're, you're going to fill a specific mold, right? I was kind of the quirky creative carefree type, right? Which is, um, I'm a lot more cynical than I was presented, you know? Uh, which is great for me, you know? I think they cut away all the, the you know, <laughs> dirty bits and like made me into this. Yeah, I was like this kind and lovely, and only love kids and love kind of person because I think a part of who I am, but also I'm very much so like a chill, like this, <laughs> like, want to be by myself, the time, the person, which, like, is well, it on TV. Yeah, so, knowing, kind of, like, identifying, okay, this is probably how I'm going to be framed by this production, as a result, like, here, here's probably how they're going to, like, here are the circumstances they're probably going to make, and with all of that in mind, here is what I am and I'm not willing to do and say. Just like setting this with yourself, right? Saying like, I, um, you know, I don't want to talk about how many shoes I have, you know? Or like, I don't want to, I don't want people to know, and obviously this wasn't a boundary for me, but for me, you know, I'm not going to share my boundaries because those are my boundaries, but like, you know, I don't want to, or I mean, you know, I wasn't going to talk about sex. Figuring out, like, again, talking about boundaries, like how, how comfortable, how comfortable are you sharing certain things and also understanding that it's also entertainment. It's entertainment, right? Yeah. And so being mindful of what you're saying or how you're saying it, just because you know that it can always be chopped up and put share any box. And uh, one of the episodes is about uh, the safety entertainment type rope, which is to say that the the more you protect yourself, the less entertaining it'll probably be. Not always, it isn't always true. But you know, the less I'm gossiping, the less I'm providing these like interesting raunchy details about my life, um, the more I'm like keeping a distance from myself and the production and the people watching the show, but also the less they're drawn in, you know, and the less, you know, and, and all that comes back to intention. What do I want out of the show? Do I want to, do I just want to find love and, and protect myself, or do I want to um, become an influencer? And, you know, and, 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 yeah, and then, like, the last three lessons uh, are titled, You Will Mess Up, Finding the Joy, Turning Down the Noise, right? So, um, you will mess up, it's just coming to terms with the fact that that's you're going to be filming for dozens, if not hundreds of hours, and inevitably you're going to say something, do something, uh, you regret. That, that doesn't paint you in a flat of life. It makes you... You can't say you that a part of Well, you can. Well, you can, but you can't. Like, you're not obligated to. I mean, yeah. can do whatever. Yeah. Um, and then within that, the next one, finding the joy, just... You know, making sure that you're uh, doing whatever you need to do to like maintain a sense of self, maintain a groundedness, and, uh, keep yourself. The, the central rule of the whole, this whole lesson plan is the idea 
of keep making sure that the show is always part of your life, that you do not perceive yourself as being part of the show. Once you are like subsumed by or consumed by the show, and you just see yourself as a character, then you you've lost yourself, right? Um, so it's it's about like making equanimity, maintaining um, clarity of purpose. And where can is it a podcast? Video podcast? Yeah, people people calling it that. We needed to turn it into a podcast. Yeah, we um, could very easily put it on audio. Um, but on YouTube, like yeah. the podcast, yeah. Yeah. and Instagram as well. Yeah, and we have, uh, you know, we have plans of starting to expand what it is to um, kind of having other people who have been on reality TV share insights and wisdom about their own Yeah. 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 Is it your yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the name of the um, My theater company is called Intramural Theater. Okay. Um, we make um, original works. We make about two shows a year. Um, one is a contemporary work by a, by a playwright who's alive, and um, usually it's a premiere, so something that either has never been done before or has never been done in the regional south. Um, and then the other piece we do is always devised, um, which means that rather than entering into a space and saying, um, okay, Donnie will be playing uh, Romeo, Becky will be playing Juliet, here are your scripts, I need you to memorize, and then we're going to rehearse and stage everything. Instead, we just enter into a space with a very limited understanding of what we're going to do. We have no script, and over the course of the rehearsal process, we build the play collectively. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah, I'm about to dive into our next process. Yeah, I'm in, I think I'm the four shows now. The four different yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love but when I first heard about the Fox Theater, I was like, how does that work? I was really in, interested in the process and then I couldn't conceptualize what it was like in our game. And then I've been to every single, uh, four, probably every single show that I've known about since then. And I uh, love, love it. Always looking forward to it. It's always really thought provoking. There's some quirky elements to, to all of it, right? But uh, it's much deeper than. There's, much, there's a lot of depth to you know, what I think the play is, and it's fun. Miles, you're a principal. Yeah. Take a lot of depth. From yesterday, I was going to include those are from the world. I follow your page. It's so cute. That's his kids. I love the joke on the day. Oh, yeah. So you have to give me the joke. Oh, man. <laughs> So, so, just so we're aware, the joke of the day started three years ago. And it really started as, I was like, you know what? I need to have some joy every day. Kids need to have some joy every day. And so the morning after was just coming I guess the day. And it caught on and been a thing, you know. Um, every day it's a different joke. And so I'm like, as it got to a point where I was running out of jokes, and I was like, kids, come, come, up, with, come up with some jokes. And lo and behold, like kids, teachers, parents, friends, family, all different kind of ways. It'll be like, like it was, it was a challenge is, you know, one of the day, so much going on. And the kid was like, Mr. Larry, Mr. Larry, Mr. Larry, 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 And I'm like, write it down, right? And then I'll realize that the kid's in the kindergarten. So I'm like, I can write it down for you. Uh, he's like a box that he has. He's a lot of different ways. I'm like, I'm going to email it to me. I'm from the text. And then I put it on my calendar for the now. Oh, cool. Yeah, Mark, do you have one? Do you have a group to send? Yeah. Um, the sad part is, like whenever anyone asks me for a spot, I, I can never remember. Okay. <laughs> I have one. Oh, you got one for me? I have one because right. I, I remember it. How do you make a Kleenex dance? Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 How do you make a Kleenex dance? Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What do you get when you cross a turtle and a porcupine? A slow poke. <laughs> oh, yeah, stuff like the holidays will give me different dad jokes books and yeah. things and so like it's, it's becoming it's becoming really cool and now that I'm I'm like, I'm like five now yeah. and, I, and then now that I'm sharing it on social media because one of the things contrary to popular belief I can't stand creating content it's so it's so time consuming and I'm like a perfectionist so I want it to look the right way and be clean and I don't have energy but like but now you don't love joke of the day, right? And so like people will message you stuff. Joke of the day will take off. <laughs> right? People message me different things and so. Yeah. Well, I want to say you're the most stylish principal I've seen. You guys are visiting a tourist. Hidden gem. Hidden gem. Would you rather be a famous celebrity or marry to be a famous celebrity and unknown? Both of you are particularly appealing to me. Although I guess I've done both. <laughs> I, I would be Beyonce's husband, and nobody yeah. knew him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's a reason. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes it easy. Yeah. Or Oprah, yeah. Oprah's like, nobody cares. Yeah. Would you rather live on a peaceful tropical island or a bus in the big city? That's something I'm struggling with every day. What kind of life I want for myself. Depends on like what the circumstances are under there. Like today? Big city. Today give me out. Would you rather know when you're going to die or how you're going to die? How? Oh, yeah. I got a I don't think I'm going to have that thing here. I mean, oh, I have a win. Yeah, I win. I don't know. 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 I do Win, win. If it's like, I think I'm gonna live. Okay. Yes, I genuinely, yes, yes, yes. I genuinely think I will. And so, if that's true, I'd be like, oh, cool. yeah. But if it was like 37, I'd be like, I'm about to do whatever I want to do. I'm gonna quit my job right now yeah. and just like, right now. yeah. What I thought of. Yeah, win. I, I think win. I think because win. you have time. To tell everyone goodbye, yeah. you know things like that that you weren't wanting to do. So yeah, because like if you found out, oh, I'm gonna die in a burning building, like I'll be terrified. Yeah, yeah, everything. yeah. I'll just live outside. Yeah. yeah, no, I and I I really thrive with the deadlines. <laughs> 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 Okay, we're giving you three wishes. Ooh. Everyone around me is healthy. I want to be able to like teleport wherever I want to go, whenever I want to go. Especially because your family does. Yeah, that would be so easy. If I was like, oh, blink. Yeah. I'm in my, my dad's house and stuff. Um, and then third. 
free food for us, boy. That's a good one. I'll be good. You have any? I am completely contaminated. Is that mimosas? Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share.